everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Suzanne Bear of Justice. And if you came here because you want to see some painting tutorials and some product reviews and anything arty, uh, you came to the right place. And in today's video, I'm going to show you some of the challenges that I encounter when doing pet portraits. Now, in today's video, it's a portrait of a dog named Kobe, and it's a posthumous portrait. So being a posthumous portrait, obviously there is no more opportunity for me to get new photographs. And so I'm gonna show you how sometimes that I'm having to use less than ideal photo references to capture whether it's the angle of the pose or the expression in the face, the coloration by using one pose here, but a different coloration here and putting, you're gonna see a lot of the challenges that I run into doing a pet portrait. You hopefully will be learning a little bit about some of my painting techniques and about the brushes that I'm using as well. And I will leave in the description on this video down below uh, a little bit about the actual brushes because I get a lot of folks asking me in the comment section, what brushes are you using? What, what is that brush? What is that, you know, what is that brush? I will leave that direct link to the brushes that I'm using in the description down below. So be sure to check that out too. And also know that this video will be available on my Patreon channel. So if you are my subscribers, thank you so much for being here. If you're not, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, just uh, leave, it down, leave it in the comment section and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump into Kobe's portrait. Ah, uh, that's Kobe. Um, the Johnson family has commissioned me to do his portrait, and this will be a posthumous portrait, unfortunately, so there will be no other opportunity to get more pictures of Mr. Kobe. And you can see that a lot of these pictures are at a little bit difficult angles and bad lighting. So here is my attempt to go ahead and start getting Kobe down on the canvas. And I'm using several different references, as you saw. Those were the only references I have of Kobe. So this is primarily, the one you see on the left, is primarily the photo reference that I'll be using throughout this portrait. Now, I actually used a body double, a photo of another Australian cattle dog, to get the angles correct because the photograph of Kobe was taken at a downward angle and that's not how I wanted to paint it. So this is me just doing uh, Kobe at a little bit more uh, straight on uh, pose. And uh, I'm just using a little bit of paint thinner, just a little bit of paint and just, you know, roughly sketching him in. And you'll see throughout this video that I will be tweaking this from one end to the next and it will change quite a bit. So that's what you're seeing here. And um, funny thing is, I'm actually using leftover paint from the previous painting, which was the previous video of the uh, um, little elk calf that I had. Since that palette was still wet and I still had a little bit of paint, I figured, eh, let's go ahead and waste not want not and use that for part of uh, Kobe's portrait. But this is really just me roughing it in. And I'll go over a little bit more about the actual paint colors that I used throughout this painting.
I'm using a little ivory, probably a number two or three um, filbert by Rosemary. And I, I, you can see me running the brush kind of horizontal to the painting. And I'm actually checking angles of the reference to my actual painting. See, these brushes are great for something other than just applying paint. They do help me keep my angles correct while, uh, while I'm working. Okay, here is the uh, starting lineup of the colors we're going to start uh, on this painting of Kobe, the Australian cattle dog. Okay, I have sap green, I have Van Dyke brown, I have burnt umber, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, I have ivory black, I have Payne's gray, I have um, ultramarine blue, king's blue, and white. That's what I'm starting with. Now a lot of what I'm going to try to do is to include, you know, I have basically a blue dog. So I want to include some oranges and that's kind of why I'm going with these earthy tones like this. And I may be adding a little bit of cad, uh, red, um, and yellow to this to make some little poppy oranges because I have a blue dog and I like to play off a compliment. So that's very likely going to enter into the background on this piece. So let's see where we can go with this. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put some background and then the one reference, uh, Kobe is sitting in the leaves and I like that idea. So I'm kind of getting an idea of where my composition is gonna go in this painting. And I wanna use colors that are going to enhance or complement the dog himself. And since he is a rather blue healer, um, I am going to use quite a bit of oranges because oranges are blue's complement. And just kind of setting in the sky here and I'm using King's Blue uh, to put the sky in and I will be setting Kobe into this painting with a fall background.
Here I'm using the uh, a larger Eclipse Filbert to do the background here, and it, it's keeping it nice and soft. Um, I don't want a lot of sharp detail, and this brush does great for application as well as for blending. And that's what we're doing here.
I'm using the Pointed Round by Rosemary. This brush is pretty nifty. It's a larger brush, you can see. It's not a tiny little brush for detail. But because it's so pointed, it does allow me to get into tight places. And I'm, you know, slowly building up Kobe's face here. And, uh, you, you know, I've, I've got a lot of application. And you see that I'm... I don't know if you can tell from the beginning of the start of this piece, I've already broadened his face a little bit out on the right. And I will continue to broaden it out. And you'll watch that this this doggy's face will morph all over the place. It will largely, you know, start to get larger and change. Okay, I have switched to an ivory filbert, and in this case, I'm actually using an Eclipse filbert. It's a uh, zero, and I'm starting to kind of put the detail into the eyes, but what you're going to see here is I'm going to do this, and I'm going in with my normal cadmium red uh, ivory black colors, and <clears throat> as I'm doing this, I'm realizing it's really hard. You know, I can't see from the reference that I'm working from uh, what his eye color really is, but the shape of his eyes, I have them too round. So I will be adjusting the shape of his eyes in this piece, but I am, you know, trying to make out the best I can from the photo reference that I'm working from just to get his eyes in. And uh, yeah, but this little, this little brush is getting a lot of, you know, more of the detail and the merling that you see in a blue dog like this.
Okay, I zoomed in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing when I'm doing the detail in the eye. <clears throat> Please forgive the uh, shine there because I do get a lot of shine. And I actually tried to hold something up to block the shine for this picture, you know, for this video. But anyhow, I am using an Eclipse Filbert number zero. And, you know, the shine that I'm putting in his eyes is not evident in the... Um, the photo reference because the dog was probably in a barn or a garage or something from the photo reference but of course I put him outside so I do have to have the shine in his eye and I'm using this the color of the sky so I did use the uh, king's blue but you can see I'm just putting in little bits of little bits of detail as I can and I keep moving through this face you know they this breed has a very broad broad head and jaw and I keep morphing it out, you can see. Now he does almost look like he has a smile, right? Hey, see, you can see here I'm broadening his nose. I keep changing this up a little bit more and a little bit more. And again, I, I'm still using this a little Eclipse Filbert.
Okay, I'm using right now, it's a little domed Eclipse Filbert, and I'm checking again my angles on all the eyes. I'll keep running that, that edge of the brush over my piece just to keep, you know, checking, always checking, because if I see something that doesn't look right, um, sometimes I don't know what it is that's not right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check my angles, and oftentimes that's where I find the problem. But uh, we're, we're moving through this and it's, everything seems to be coming together. Remember, he is a merled dog. So a lot of times the merling throws me off in that, you know, he may have a, a light strip over his nose that makes his nose look crooked or whatever. So I'm showing you the actual load I put on the brush and it's not a lot of paint and I keep it focused on the tip of the brush. I do not have it all the way through the brush and I'm putting in the little water line. I'm doing this stuff that you would see if this dog was in bright sunlight. But I, 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 it doesn't look quite right to me. And I think his eyes were too round. So you'll see eventually, I do change the shape slightly. But uh, yeah, it's just because I'm working, I'm working against different photo references that will show me one thing and then another photo reference shows me something that looks completely different. So that is a challenge. I will not, uh, I will not tell an untruth. It is a challenge. Now I have to imagine where the light's gonna hit this dog. So the top parts are gonna be a lot, you know, a little bit more of a highlight to him. So here I'm just kind of lightening the top of his muzzle, and I've actually brought his muzzle out a little bit more. And you'll see that each time I keep adding, you know, bringing it out a little bit more, changing this, changing that. You know, the Australian cattle dog is a real sturdy, sturdy little dog. I mean, it's built solid. And uh, they're, they're great, they're great working dogs. And uh, so I'm trying to capture his broad smile and getting that, um, I don't know, that little cheekiness that they seem to have. Almost like they have a big old giant grin on their face. And you can see the photo reference there on the right, the one that I'm primarily working from and trying to get everything in here. And so I'm lightening up the values that I know would be lighter. And um, I just keep working, 
working along. Again, I'm still using the Eclipse Domed Filbert here. Great little brush, almost like a sable. I mean, it it blends almost like a sable, and it's um, it's a good brush. It's a good brush. So I use use it quite a bit here. Okay, working on the tongue. Um, one of the, the way I usually mix my traditional mixing of color for the tongue is alizarin crimson and burnt sienna, and I'll use white. And I have the shadow under the mouth where you can see that I gray it down a little bit. And because I know where the canines are, there would be a slight bulge in the tongue where the teeth are underneath. And so I'm, you know, everything is, eh, it's very deliberate. And I have to imagine where things are here because I cannot see it. It's not in the reference. So yeah, we're just getting that tongue in and he's looking, he's just looking more and more like Kobe the more we get through the painting. Okay, so we're working through the body here, and uh, so I'm, I'm you know, getting in the feet and the details in his legs and trying to get everything in. 
I'm, I'm pretty content with the face. Now I do revisit it, but I am creating the shadow that his body would create if he was actually outdoors. So I, you know, there is that challenge. So I'm trying to create the form by um, lightening the area, the mid-tone of his body and working my way out, if you will, from um, where the, the light would hit. Does that make sense? I'm trying to, basically I'm sculpting this dog Ah, the leaves. Now I've got to get the leaves in. And so I am using a, a combination of burnt sienna, cadmium, um, red, cadmium yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre, white, umber, you know, everything that would go into making leaves. And it, I'm chatting away. You could see my mouth moving and I'm talking. Well, then I realized, oh, I have so much music playing in the background. I can't. So I knew I had to voice this over. So when you see my mouth moving, no, I'm actually talking to you. And, this, and that's what I was doing here. So yeah, moving along, moving along, getting this all done. But I am working a little bit from the background to the foreground. I'm working on all angles here, trying to wrap this piece up. And I know I'm getting close. I can feel it. I can feel it. There's a bright beauty for you. I had a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow left. And because I had said earlier, I didn't want to squirt out any more paint because I'm getting ready to leave for the day. And that's just me being super lazy. But hey, I like a challenge. So <laughs> this is me just challenging at myself and, and putting a, um, just trying new things here, folks. shape here. The leaves can be weird shapes. Remember I said we're probably going to put some shapes back here as if this dog is in the pile of leaves. to get all this, the, the dog done, and then return to the leaf area tomorrow. My goal is to finish this up. I want to have everything else kind of, except for maybe the detail, everything pretty much done. Um, so I can, because tomorrow is Wednesday. Tomorrow is a very busy day here at the studio. I have students all day. 
starting at 10, which is awesome. Um, love it. I love what I do. I thrive on, <laughs> I thrive on uh, pressure, I suppose. Have a feeling there's leaves and I'm purposely kind of avoiding the legs right now because what's gonna happen once this kind of dries out and I've got all the detail in the legs then what I'm gonna do is put a couple leaves so that I have that overlap that feeling of you know, and I'm just kind of hitting some of the tops of these leaves a little bit lighter values on there. Again, that looks like the light's catching them. Remember that everything is going to get smaller and closer and I don't want to put a lot of detail in here, although it will get lighter in value, so I really need to it down for the day. starting to get messy here guys I'm tired it's not that it's that long a day I I did have a it was a good day at the studio I had, a, I had a student just one student today my friend come by I get to visit with my friends and stuff at work. You know what? I'm I like my job. My, a lot of times my friends, my students become my friends, and then we just socialize. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad gig, y'all. It's just really not a bad gig. Hang out with your friends and uh, paint. Okay. Alright, that's where I'm gonna leave it off today. So uh, if you're looking, following along here, uh, I worked on the face quite a bit, and I'm using several, several different uh, references to do uh, Kobe here, and I've got one of the references is up right now. Um, and I worked a little bit, I probably need to, sorry, I can't leave it alone. I'll probably work a little bit more, I'm gonna add a little bit more light into the trees back here. because uh, I'm not really sure what I got going on there. So, eh, I'll address it tomorrow. I don't need a lot of detail, and I keep forgetting that I, I, I don't need to do that. <laughs> I know you're probably thinking, what though? I don't understand, so. so I'm just trying to, you know, give it some dark values. And my little windows, I could go ahead and put another little uh, window in there. I can clean this brush a little bit better before I leave and I'll just put a little window or two in and I'm just using a little bit of King's Blue and this is what I'm talking about little windows of light that's kind of, kind of coming through and this needs a little window here too Actually, kind of wet because I had the, the greens. It's working with the greens. All right, I need to stop. I'm just tired and I'm just goofing. Okay, we're stopping because I'm getting goofy. All right, well, we'll pick up tomorrow and uh, 
take it to fruition. So, see you then. Okay, this is the last day. I am actually just kind of tying up loose ends. I'm doing a little bit of the detail in his ruff and putting in a lot of his gray merling that goes into his fur. And, you know, you save all the details really for the end. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just kind of hitting it, getting it, <laughs> and uh, wrapping it up. But yeah, I can feel it. It's He's almost done. And I'm really pleased with how he's turning out here. Um, but yeah, just getting the last a little bit of detail in and softening some edges where edges need to be, you know, just kind of toned down. And I will be putting some leaves in around his feet. So I do still have some work to do on his feet, you'll see. And, um, but I'll be wrapping it up and it's almost done. to get as much detail in around the face and his little sweet smile. So move down his body. You know, what's hard to really detect is how you have to layer up some of the hairs. And just the colors in the leaves help make it more interesting. But yeah, there we have it. You can take a look here at the palette. Yeah, by the time I'm finished, the palette's quite a mess, but trust me, I know where each one of those colors is. And here is one of the references. So that's the main reference I was using for color and expression for doing this piece. Um, you know, set it in the fall scene, and I, you know what, I'm okay. This is this turned out okay. It was a challenge. I won't, you know, it really was um, because I. As you can see, this one's taken at a down angle, and I tried to bring them up on the angle here. So um, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments section, and I'll get to you. And there we have Kobe. That was a long video, right? Uh, I am ultimately pleased with how 
how Kobe's portrait turned out. You can see it right here. Um, it, it did have its challenges for sure. The challenges came in that I had some weird positions. Um, a lot of times people photographing their dogs are taking the picture down like this. They're, they don't have the dog at the same level. Uh, instead, the dog is down at a lower level. And you know what, we all do that. We all shoot pictures of our dogs in funny, awkward positions. And you know, keep this in mind. Take good photographs of your pets. Just do it, just do it. Take them at their level. That's the best way to help people like me do a really good portrait, but also give for you to have a lasting photograph of your pet. And uh, yeah, so that should be your takeaway. Again, I will leave a lot of the links in the comment section, no, not the comment section, in the description in this video to all the brushes that I'm using here. So you can go ahead and jump on. I get a lot of questions asking about the brushes. So I left it in the actual video description. And leave me uh, any questions that you may have about what I was doing here. Um, just leave it in the comment section and I'll get to you if you have a suggestion of something you'd like to see uh, on my channel, leave that there too. I, you know, I'm open to all kinds of suggestions and know that this video is available or will be available on my Patreon channel. So again, thanks so much for joining me. If you are my subscribers, thank you so much. If you're not, you know what to do right here. Go ahead. God, do it. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell and you'll know when the next video comes out. Okay. So thanks again. And until next time, I'll see you from Kingsport, Tennessee. Bye.